let's come back down here and take a look at these color options down below here and choosing colors. I can go back to a paintbrush as well. Here we go. And I'll just click on one of these. This brings up the color picker in here. And I can choose any color inside here. Right now we're looking at the hue, saturation, and brightness layout right there with the hue, which is your color, in here and saturation which is going from full color to no color that's going across this way notice how it's real saturated over here and you lose all your color on that side and then brightness top to bottom real bright at the top you can see the white up here real dark at the bottom that's your black so hue saturation and brightness that's what's going on in here I could change this and put anything I want over here I could put saturation in here if I wanted to and then hue is across the side and brightness up and down or I can put brightness in here in this case hue is across there and saturation is up and down but it gets confusing if you do that I normally just leave it there you could come in here and put in your different colors such as your reds on this side and then green and blue in here but that gets a bit complex so there's the hue saturation brightness if you want to you can limit this to web colors which, you know, it really isn't necessary any longer to use web colors, although I will still use this just to find a quick color, you know, bigger things to choose from. You know, and these tend to be nice, solid, bright colors. But if I'm not quite happy with that, I'll just uncheck web colors. The, the chooser stays in the same spot, and then I can kind of adjust that by moving around in here. Notice up here we have a couple little things. This is, this, this is not a web safe color. Again, you can ignore the web safe color bit. It, it no longer applies. Really. That, that's old, old, old technology. Not sure why they're even mentioning it any longer. If you, if you want to take this and push it to a web safe color, just click on that, and it pushes it to the closest web safe color. Now, down below here, something for the web, and that's this. This is your hexadecimal number for that particular color. Notice as I go over here that changes and over here that changes. So if you need to have a hexadecimal color to use in the code for a web page for instance that's where it is right down there. So you have that available. Notice if I click on this that goes to the closest color that matches that and you can spot a web safe color very easily because they're in pairs. So there's two C's, two nines, two sixes and this represents the R, G, and B aspects of that color if you're, you really care about that so the hexadecimal numbering system which is what this is hexadecimal number that goes from 0 up to F so it's 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 A B C D E F so that's the range of values used to determine those colors. And each one of these pairs is one of our colors. That's red. The middle pair is your blue value. Actually, green value, rather. And the last one is your blue value, RGB. And again, these are going to be in matching pairs if it's a web safe color. I'll just click over here. It's no longer a web safe, as you can see there. Click on that web safe button and notice how it's down to matching pairs in there. If you want a grayscale in here, gray tone, make these all the same. All F's, one, two, three, four, five, six, or six of them. All F's is white. It's all the way to the top. All zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, is black. And anything in between will be a gray tone. So all sixes, one, two, three, four, five, six, is kind of a medium gray. All nines will be a little lighter gray. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. A little lighter gray. You see it up there. And below six, let's say all threes, one, two, three, four, five, six, is a darker gray. So that's how that works for choosing your colors. When you're happy with that color, just choose OK. That then sets that color in down here. And that becomes your color on your brush tool as well. Or other tools also. They paint, they fill. For instance, paintbrush, anything which is using a color will be set by that option. Now notice here we have a background color and a foreground color. There's the 
foreground color right there. The one behind it is a background color. I can swap those by clicking the little arrow and that swaps that out. Now some tools have their own built-in color chart. That's right down here to see this. This brings up the color swatches. We can bring swatches over on the right hand side as well. If we bring back our panel bin, there we go. There's the panel bin and color swatches right here. There's the color swatches. So if you're using something like this and you'll find these in a few different spots inside the program, this will bring up the color swatches panel. You can then choose from your swatches. Notice how the swatch color matches the foreground color that we chose previously. It just kind of presets that. If I click on that, here we go, here's the swatches. On this you can grab that corner and you can expand the box if you want to. There we go. Notice down here I can bring up the color picker which we had there. That's what we're looking at previously so you can use that as well. So you can go back and forth, color picker and this. We can make new swatches in here. If you if you make a new color on your color picker, you can make a new swatch and add it into your swatch set. And as I mentioned a couple of videos ago, we have different color swatch sets. This is the default. There's the Mac OS set. Mac colors. Photo filter colors. Web hue colors. Those are all webs. Here's your web safe colors. Getting a scroll up and down, see the whole range in there. Now notice as I pull this open, oh, I lost it there, there we go, I'll grab the side of that. Those kind of reposition themselves. If you pull it out, you can probably find a spot like that where it makes a little more sense. Here's a web spectrum. And again, I can pull this in until I find a spot that makes some sense. That's, that's pretty good right there for a web spectrum and then the Windows color palette and again I can pull this in or out until I find the right alignment for the colors. That's pretty close alignment. That's beginning to work into block areas. So there you go and there's the default again. But there it is. That is working with the color swatches and again, you can use either of these, the color swatches or the color picker, to choose colors that you're working with inside of the program. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. And finally, you can get all of my training videos on DVD at howtogurus.com. Thanks again for watching.